Good morning guys, Unfrequented World, and today I just want to talk a little bit again about the Watchdog app for the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. This is revolutionizing the way I collect data for the car. It is absolutely exactly what I wanted and what you need if you want to precisely track the distances that you've traveled on electric versus uh, fuel. And, uh, and now will allow us to do testing, such as if we go on a trip, is it better to use a B0, no regenerative braking, versus regenerative braking, for example. And the reason I bring that up is because that's exactly what I did over the last four days. This bottom one, we went to our cottage and we made it there 100% on EV. Um, literally about 200 yards short of the cottage, um, it showed that the, the battery had started, but the log here records that the battery didn't actually start and we made it all the way to the cottage. So if we click on this, for example, I just wanted to show you guys also, you can click on any one of these um, tabs and it tells you what it is. So average speed and then your maximum speed. Whoever told me before online that the, the PHEV always reserves 30% battery and you don't use that is absolutely correct. Now when I input in my charts, Instead of guessing and saying, oh, I think it was 8 kilowatts, I can convert this amp hours to kilowatts, and I'll know exactly how much I used. It also shows you here, regenerative. So it shows us um, that on this trip, for example, we regenerated 1.2 amp hours with regenerative braking. And I was testing, this is one of my test runs for the zero um, regenerative braking. The only time I clicked the paddles was when I was coming to a stop sign. So maybe six stop signs along the way. We regained 1.2 amp hours just over that little bit. So unfortunately this means guys that uh, all of my numbers up to this point are wrong because when I calculated how much battery power I was using I was basing it on 12 kilowatt hours which someone had told me you're not using a full 12 kilowatt hours on a charge but I had no way to do it other than to look at the bar on the dash and say we used half of it there's six kilowatt hours and put it in my excel sheet now i can actually take the exact number of kilowatt hours used put it in and calculate that out funny enough so my kilowatt hours per hundred uh kilometers is going to be off but the price is going to be about the same because i didn't take into account that freaking hydro charges us 30 some percent delivery fee for every uh, kilowatt hour we get to the house so my kilowatt hours on the car is going to come down now significantly. I'm going to go back in my Excel sheet and just take 30% off all the numbers I have in there. And, um, but the price is going to stay about the same. So I think we're somewhere after two and a quarter months, we're somewhere around 30 some dollars spent on hydro. So not bad at all. We're at uh, 2,800 kilometers. So I had one viewer request if I could do a test to see if B0 regenerative braking actually worked any better on a trip than trying to maximize your regeneration every time you go down a hill, slowing down and trying to capture power, which is how I've been driving this car for two and a half months. I had never put this car in B0 mode until this test. Holy man, does this car coast. It will just, if you're hitting 80 or 90 on a back road and it's nice and flat, you just keep going and going and wow, it really coasts. So we did a test where we went out to the cottage three times and uh, each time when we went there and each time we went back I ran this B0 test versus my regenerative uh, normal way of driving which is every little hill I come to and we're going down I take my foot off and I try to regen as much power as I can. And the first thing without even looking at any numbers um, we, the kids and I had picked a spot in the road that we could make it to w uh, at the cottage. And we were always about 300 yards short of the cottage. We drove the same speed every time we went out, 90 kilometers on the highway, and maybe 85 on the back roads, 80. And um, we always hit within, you know, 50 yards, the same spot in the road. We were still 300, 350 yards away from the cottage. So when we started doing this uh, B0 test, we actually were making it right to the cottage. The battery was still reading completely empty and it was showing the last two times it actually showed the engine starting where you're getting that blue regenerative arrow coming from the car engine into the batteries. But as the watchdog app showed us, 
the engine hadn't actually started. So, did we make it further with zero regenerative braking? Yes, we did. In the B0 mode, um, they have a stat on here that works for this testing. It shows you if you click on the airplane here, that this is gliding mode, glide time, moving with engine off and no acceleration and no regenerative braking, B0. And that's what we were trying to test with this, uh, the last few runs. 25% of my trip out there was made just in gliding in B0. That's how well this car coasts. The 7% underneath it is the stop signs that we were coming to and I had put it on, you know, B2, 3, 4, 5 to, to slow down. This app has everything that you could want to uh, use for testing. It's, I mean, gliding time, come on. <laughs> and the nice thing about B0 on the highway is when you slow down and you take your foot off the gas and you're in bumper to bumper, the guy behind you doesn't slow, suddenly end up on your rear end because he doesn't realize that you're, you've taken your foot off and you really do slow down when you're regening uh, power. So on the highway for sure, I recommend B0. And I suspect that at in town at slower distances, this, I can't believe how far the car coasts on B0. I suspect that you might do even better if we took the highway out of the equation. But on the three tests I did was 19 kilometers highway and then back roads out to my cottage, 44 kilometers each way, and three complete trips, B0. Probably total got you an extra kilometer out of all three trips, something like that. But it was getting you further. So another thing we haven't talked about, guys, with the uh, Mitsubishi PHEV is travel speeds. When I have electric in the car, I try to keep it in there as long as I can. I try to avoid the highway. Um, and when I am on the highway, I only do the maximum is 100. I won't go over that until the electric runs out and then I start using the gas. Then I might speed up a little bit. I try to go as far as I can, um, as long as I can, on the electric. So I actually change my routes. I drive the back roads quite a bit. I don't mind doing 70 or 80 on a back road. I'm turning into one of those old grandpa drivers where I actually enjoy the nice quiet ride and I'm like, hey, look at the cows! <laughs> wife actually said the other day driving out to the cottage, I didn't know this car would do more than 100. <laughs> also wanted to show you guys, the car's been uh, sitting here all night charging in the garage, that the V-Gate iCar Pro 3 adapter is right there. It turns itself off when the car is not running. So we mentioned before that uh, it's not running and drawing power all the time, but I just wanted to show you guys it is completely off. Um, it's probably a minute or two after the car shuts off, all the lights go off and it is asleep. You will notice that on the highway, you probably instead of getting 44 to 50 kilometers on a full charge, I probably get somewhere around 35. So if you are running, you know, more than 90 kilometers, it really does drain the electric. So it's just common sense. The slower you go, the further you're going to go.